they don't have reliable transportation. The buses break down. They're over 20 years old. We bought buses from Kentucky because Kentucky considered the buses too old. Um, so the state, you know, we gotta, we got to, we, we're at a state of emergency in our public schools. Not, a, you know, it's not just the, the money. It's also discipline. I just toured uh, Burns at Burns Elementary School. I, I just couldn't believe. Uh, it's almost as if the children ate a bag of sugar. <laughs> when I arrived, they just unleashed that energy. Um, but those teachers are doing a fine job. They're underpaid. We don't pay our we don't pay our police officers. Listen, I fought for a bill to provide police officers with workers' compensation for post uh, PSTD, post PTSD, PTS, post traumatic stress disorder, and the Republicans killed them. Uh, you know the thing that amazes me. I've been blessed in life. I don't want to talk about my success, but I've been successful. Um, and I can't understand, I'm having a hard time understanding why people vote against their economic interests. It just baffles me that why we don't want to raise our teacher's pay. Why we wouldn't want to pay our police officers? Why we don't want to have good roads? I mean, why would we vote for people who um, don't want a robust first responder team where our education has been at the bottom uh, since, I, since I can remember our public education? We're, we're almost 50th in education. Thank God for, we're not 50, but thank God for Mississippi and Alabama. <laughs> I mean, so we're we're not going forward. Yes, we got Boeing, but you know how much we gave Boeing to come here? You know how much we gave Volvo to come here? So they're saying, hey, South Carolina is a great place. I don't have to pay what I pay in other states. They will give me money. They won't allow people to unionize for benefits, that's a good proposition. And so to me, we got to change the dynamics. Nobody listens. Hillary Clinton was a poor, she was a great lady, and she was most experienced, but she was a poor communicator. Uh, she would, Obama would introduce her, have everybody on their feet, and she would come with a five-point plan that nobody understood. And so um, Donald Trump has very, very limited experience, but he's a great communicator. That's what he does for a living. And so he was able to convince people that he is for them. Now, we'll see. And I'm going to keep on the mind, so we'll see what happens. Um, he's our president. We've got to support him. I won't won't speak negatively about it because uh, I don't think that's the right thing to do. I will try to, to the extent I have to say, go to Congress or uh, elsewhere. Uh, I will, if he has policies that I don't agree with, I'll fight against them. But we have to respect our elected officials because they represent us. We want them to be successful. So I think in the aftermath, the lesson uh, is we really need to start focusing. What are we doing? What are we doing as a state? Are, are you guys work? Is your is your income? And maybe so. My income has risen because you know we we've been successful as a firm. I'm a I'm a lawyer. Um, but the majority of people that I represent, their income has remained stagnant. And the rich are truly getting richer off of the backs of people who work. And that ain't right. That ain't right. So I think that's the takeaway. What is each individual student here going to do with your graduate degree? Are you going to go out and, and, and make the sacrifice to go into public service? We need you. 
Are you going to become an advocate for whatever it is you believe in? Are you going to fight for it? Are you going to kowtow and bend over backwards like most of us? A weak knee? Uh, we got too many weak knee people out here. We need people to stand up for what they believe in and exercise their rights and protect their rights and be great. Everybody can be great, and it doesn't take a rocket scientist. Uh, it takes a good work ethic. I expect for my daughter to be great, being, uh, being uh, uh, modest, you know, if, that, if she is working to her ability and being mediocre is all she can achieve, then I'll love her. But if she is not working to her greatest ability, I'm going to challenge her and push her to be great. That's what we need. We need great people with big ideas. And so I know you've learned a lot from the professor. So I'm going to shut up and take questions. Uh, but all of you are going to go into your respective professions and make a contribution particularly for those who have historically not been able to benefit by this new economy uh, that we have. That's what I'm going to fight for. I don't know if I covered. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. What, what uh, thoughts or questions does that trigger? Kind of off topic, but uh, where are you from in Columbia? Uh, I went to Columbia High School. I grew up um, near Eau Claire High School, uh, or near Columbia College off Colonial. Right. You from Columbia? Yeah, I'm from Florida State here. So I went to uh, AC4. Okay, yeah, Florida. Uh, near Drear. Yeah, yeah, very close. It's like a mile away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, uh, to, uh, I think my uh, brother's daughter is first, a ninth grader at AC4. Oh, okay. It's yeah. a good school. Yeah. Good for public schools. It's, it's yeah. I know you all got something on your mind. So let me just say this. I see his body camera there. Uh, I, uh, I've, I've been working with Chief Triggers. I gave them the first grant uh, to buy 115 body cameras. This was before the shooting of Walter Scott. Uh, I, I noticed that we were having a number of shootings and then a number of allegations made against the police. And uh, what we saw with the shooting of LeVar Jones in Richland County in 2014 that the dash cam caught the whole thing on tape. I said, well, you know, that's a great idea. Many championed it before me. Um, but I was able to secure a grant for $275,000. And I turned it over to Chief Triggers and Assistant Chief Reggie Burgess. And now many of your COPS programs and other community-based programs are, are funded in part by some funding. So I, I was wondering, um, you know, Charleston's received praise for you know its kind of demonstration of civic unity um, in the wake of uh, the Mother Emanuel massacre. And so I'm, I'm wondering if you just had some thoughts on that. And, um, I mean, you've you've suggested that um, just from a legislative perspective that it's been pretty superficial after the the flag. There's been nothing of substance, but just. I'm wondering if you have any further thoughts on that. Uh, well, uh, I, I that would notion say, of unity. Well, I would say that we are, we, you know, in the aftermath, it was important for us to be united. It was very much important. And I, I, I followed all those organizations who came together because we needed to do that mm -hmm. as a community. Um, and we will continue to have to do those kinds of things, especially. I don't know what's going to happen on the four corners of justice between these two trials, but whatever happens, we have to have faith in the judicial system. I'm an officer of the court. I do believe that justice will be served. Uh, I do believe that people, no matter what their race, uh, as long as people are objective and can interpret the facts, I believe that the verdict rendered will be just. I have to believe. It's been proven time and time again that there are some verdicts that have not turned out uh, the way that um, people have wanted. But again, we weren't in the evidence room and 
we had to listen to all the testimony. Um, so I can't, I can't say that, that one verdict is wrong um, unless I tried the case and I was there. Um, which I, I, in these two incidences, uh, I hadn't been there. Um, I think going forward, you know, we're going to have to do ex exactly what I just suggested, do something. We hadn't done anything. I mean, the flag was nice to take down that symbol. And some people may disagree with that. we got to be able to respect people without getting in a fight with them. I watch all these people on television. I've had to turn off CNN. Uh, you know, most of them aren't even qualified to opine on a local election versus, you know, uh, being on television to opine on a national election. And we put guests on there. I can remember when I was on CNN, uh, they they find these people in the woods. <laughs> and just really just uh, begging me to argue with them. Well, my mom always told me that you don't wallow in the mud of the hall because that's where the hall lives. So you don't lower yourself just because somebody, you just ignore them. If you spend time trying to out wild a hog in the swamp, you're going to lose because that's his natural habitat. So we are looking for people to do something. Um, and even though you're in the minority, when I say minority, I'm talking about in the Democratic Party, I'm not referring to race. Um, I can use the rules of the Senate and the minority party to be effective, and that's what we did this year. I proposed a uh, what I thought was reasonable. You should not be allowed in the state of South Carolina to purchase a gun until the background check is complete. That makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, does that make sense? So if your background check is not complete, you shouldn't be able to buy a gun until it's complete. 95% of background checks are completed within the first two minutes. The, the other 5%, uh, percent, there's some type of problem. Now, it may be that your name was spelled incorrectly. 